let's turn our favorite vintage book into a unique butterfly themed wall decoration. Hi there, this is Luise Heinzel. Welcome to my channel Junk Journal Art and welcome to, yeah, let's say a little bit different tutorial today. I have these gorgeous vintage books that I um, bought in Rome when I was on holiday there. And originally I bought them because I wanted to turn them into a junk journal. <laughs> But now, since they are here in my stash for a few years, I can't do that. I have a problem with turning them into a junk journal because I want to look at them the whole day because they are so beautiful. The spines are so elegant and so wonderful that I can't take them apart and use them as a normal journal. So I came up with the idea to make something different out of that. And that's what I want to show you today. I would like to turn one of these books into a really outstanding wall decoration so that we can later on see the whole book on the wall like this and that it's not only in the shelf but a really outstanding piece in my craft room. Okay, so first of all I have to choose one of these books and I think the decision is really easy because this color, this turquoise here, would fit really well to the rest of my room. So I think I will go with this one, even if this purple is really gorgeous as well. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to search for approximately the middle of the book so that this is the same thickness as this, if that makes sense. So now I'm taking the book like it is here and as you can see you need a book that has this hello spine here. So that means that you can look through the book here. I don't know if you can see that in the camera but yeah there you can see my desk. So that you have this hole here that is going through along the whole spine so that you now can take a knife and cut exactly here in the middle. So I'm taking this really sharp knife now and then I will cut from here um, to the bottom. Make sure if you want to do that, that the knife is not too close to the spine because you don't want to cut into your spine. Then we are just going to cut this. When we now put that to the table, this should be like, yeah, a canvas or something like that. It should be really flat and all the same height here. Do you know what I mean? When you have managed that this has exactly the same height on both sides, then you can take a piece of cardstock or something like that, even a decorative piece of wood would work, um, to back this book. So I will take this piece of cardstock now, I will place that to my table and when I place my book on top, how can I show you that? Hmm. You can see that it has the same height as the pages and it's a little bit smaller than the whole thing is wide because I don't want to see this later of course when I take that so I will glue that to the cardstock now uh, and when this hangs at my wall later of course I don't want to see this cardstock here from from the side of the uh, piece of course so now I will take some gel medium cover the um, cardstock up and then I will place the book on top exactly like this and while I'm doing that I'm pressing that especially here down really really well so that the spine stays in in the place and in the position like it is now that's my main goal with this step that the spine can't do something like this do you know what I mean? So we have to choose something that is below here so that this gets really, really sturdy. Okay, so when we have that, we can take other books and place them 
on top here so that everything can dry really well. I will take some more books so that it gets really heavy here on top so that that can dry. And while that is drying, we can prepare the butterfly that we want to put onto this book later. For the butterfly, I have chosen this die cut here. This is the Perspective Butterfly by Zizix, designed by Tim Holtz. This is the packaging and this is how the butterfly comes out later. This is so gorgeous. This is such a gorgeous die cut. The number is 665201. I will link this down below in the description box for you so that you can check that out. So this is the die cut. And I've already cut out some of those um, butterflies from normal scrapbooking paper. I have used the back side of the scrapbooking paper because, uh, yeah, with the technique that we want to do today, we need no special paper. You can use anything that you want. This is a little bit thicker. So that means that it is relatively sturdy when you cut it. Of course, you can use any kind of paper that you want. The back has here this ugly... Uh, golden pattern that I didn't like. That's also a great idea to um, use up your papers from a paper pad, for example, that you don't like. So I have chosen the patterns that I don't like because I only need the white surface here. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to layer my uh, butterflies on top of each other so that the one butterfly that I will have in the end is really, really sturdy. For that, I'm taking some gel medium again to glue that. Um, and let's see how many layers we will need. I mean, that's a little bit personal preference, how many layers you would like to glue on top of each other. I will show you um, that from the side later so that you can see how thick it will be. But this one layer would be not enough for what I want to do. I want to have a wall decoration that is sturdy and durable and for that I'm just gluing some of these on top of each other now. Now I will let this dry really really well. So this is now approximately two millimeters thick. As I said please uh, do it as thick as you want it and when you have that this base then let that dry really really well and while that is drying we can prepare the top layer of the butterfly. Um, for that I'm using another layer, I mean another piece that I have cut out, exactly the same thing, scrapbooking paper, one layer. I think I want to go with some peacock feathers first. I'm using the Distress Oxide ink, uh, this is peacock feathers as I said, and I'm using this little brush here to bring some color to my butterfly now. Um, forest moss would be a great additional color. That's this one here. It's the oxide ink as well. So for this I want to blend this a little bit. Since this is an oxide ink, we will spritz some water now to get some crazy effects. And I'm pressing to my uh, here to this uh, thing from the bottle, not too hard, to get not everything wet, but only some areas. Can you see that here? You can see these lighter areas where the ink is already reacting. So now we are going to dry this. So after this is dry, it looks like this, and um, I have to say. This is only the base for our color palette now. So um, if you have put green here, the blending here of the green and the turquoise and the turquoise in the middle, that will be um, yeah your color uh, reference for the layers that we put on top now. So next we are going to add a relatively new medium by Tim Holtz slash ranger that's this distress grid paste it was so hard for me to find it and to get it but it's totally worth it this is absolutely magical what this paste can do is magical so um 
I will try to link that down below for you. I think overseas on Amazon it's uh, way easier to get. But perhaps you can get it also in your scrapbooking shop where you always go shopping or wherever. So I will show you the thing here so that you can read the name. And this is translucent. And that's also the reason why we have put a layer of the ink to the butterfly first. And then we are putting this grid paste on top. But we have to let this dry now really really good okay so next i'm going to bring a really thin layer of gel medium to the whole surface of the book cover to make it on the one hand matte in the end to give it a little bit more yeah texture i would say because the brush brush strokes <laughs> would give it a little bit of interest and everything that we want to put to it will um, can be glued way more easily when we have a little bit of uh, this medium on top. <clears throat> Since the gel medium is dry now, I want to stamp something to the background with white uh, ink. For the stamping, I have chosen this stamp here. This comes from this letter script stamp set by Stampus Anonymous slash Tim Holtz and this I think is really cool because it's so delicate it has really much interest for a background and it is nearly a rectangle but not a rectangle at all <laughs> and it's not so big um, so that I think that this will work really really well for the stamping I'm using the Stazon opaque cotton white ink pad Please don't be ugly. Don't be ugly. <gasps> yeah. Oh my goodness. Ah. That is fantastic. Oh my goodness. I have not expected that this will be come so cool. That is totally amazing. Okay, so that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Okay, so the ink is dry, but uh, even if the butterfly is not finished yet, the background looks a little bit too new to me. It's not vintage enough and it has not enough of the brown that we have in the spine here. I'm using Distress Oxide ink, walnut stain and brushed corduroy to make some drops here. I'm using the refiller mixed with some water for that. Oh, that is a great color and I guess I have to let this air dry okay so let's finish up this butterfly while um, the other thing is drying after this grid paste is totally dry I will go over the paste with exactly the same colors of the oxide ink that we've used in the very beginning just to make those colors more intensive and bring out the texture of this grid paste. And of course now we also have the possibility to mix in some other colors that we would like for this. I think um, that wild honey would be a great additional color. to bring uh, out some highlights here and there on the butterfly. I 
think I already really like that, even if it will change a lot now. Because now we will add some embossing glaze. Yes, you've heard right. Embossing glaze. <laughs> and I'm using the walnut stain embossing glaze. This is a brown, of course. You might think, oh my goodness, what is she doing? She's destroying her colors. But please, please, please wait a little bit. This will be just amazing in the end. I promise you. <laughs> so um, since the embossing glaze is, tran ooh, is translucent, you will get a really, really cool effect by doing this because um, the brown is translucent. That means you can see all of the colors underneath where you will put the embossing glaze. That means you will get a really, really interesting mixture out of the brown the forest moss, the peacock feathers, and the wild honey. And that looks really, really cool in the end. We will get an effect that is nearly like wet glass. And that's really, really cool. So, I mean, if you don't like this, I can't help you. Then you are on the wrong YouTube channel. This is so crazy. Please try that out. It looks like this butterfly is made out of glass. This is, I mean, I think you have to try that out because my camera can't catch what I see with my eyes. I will try to make some photos and put them to my Instagram so that you can check that out. And I will also put them to my YouTube community uh, tab. Some of you have suggested that. Thank you for, very much for that. You have said that not everyone is on Instagram. That's true, of course, and that's okay. Um, but you, of course, also want to see those things. So you can also find some photos on uh, the community tab here on YouTube. Uh, because I think that my camera can't catch what my eye can see. This is so crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Okay, so uh, this has dried completely different than I thought, but I'm totally in love with this. I could make a little dance at the moment here in my craft room. <laughs> it's a phenomenon with every new project that when you sleep over it and you look at it with fresh eyes in the next morning that's the case for me here at the moment then you think okay something is going wrong something is missing i want to change something or i am completely not satisfied <laughs> so yesterday evening when i looked at this I realized that my white stamping here in the background went a little bit wrong. Um, perhaps you can see that when you look closer. This is a little bit smeared here. And when I look from far away, this really kills my nerves. This looks so strange. And another thing that I also don't like is this square here. I wish I had um, faded the stamp a little bit by putting not so much ink to the edges of this square but of course that's a very very difficult thing to do also here the lines are really really ah, strong and I'm not sure if I like that um, and what I also think is that this background has not enough interest. I think um, the butterfly is so bam that we can put some tinier things to the background um, to break those lines here from the stamping on the one hand and to, and to make the background a little bit more interesting to give this butterfly more attention because of the background. I don't know how I can explain that. And I also want to add a little quote or a word or something like this here. This ephemera set 
by Tim Holtz. These are really tiny and wonderful little numbers and that stuff. This is called Number Strips. If I can find this, I will link that down below for you so that you can check that out. This is the one set that I have here. Then I have these tiny things, also really, really gorgeous. And here are some colors that we probably can use here to connect the whole thing a little bit better. And these are really fantastic for tags as well because they are so small. Um, I really like these tiny things. That makes so much difference when you have more detailed things um, on a collage, for example. Yeah, I mean, especially when you have something um, like this big focal point. Um, with a big focal point, I really like those tiny things that give attention to the focal point because of the background. I don't know how to explain that. But the third thing that I have here is collage tiles. I think this is also relatively new. Um, and these are those a little bit bigger squared pieces. Also really, really gorgeous ephemera. And um, for the little word that I want to use here, I have these things. I've just forgot um, how these are called. These are two different sets that I have mixed in this little box. I've bought those uh, on an online flea market. Um, but I think you know these. These are by Tim Holtz as well. I, I'm can't just, I just can't uh, remember how these are um, called. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> this is my final result. It's not totally dry, so I have to lift it up very carefully. But now I'm totally happy with this and I'm so happy how this came out. All of those little details, especially from these little ephemera pieces here, are so gorgeous in my eyes and this butterfly. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I can't wait until this is dry now because I want to see how it looks at my wall. I hope you like this and I hope you will try to make your own wall decoration out of a vintage book like this. And I would be really, really happy to see some of your results on social media. So if you want to post that somewhere, then please tag me at Luisa Heinzel. You can also use my hashtag Junk Journal Art mit Luisa Heinzel. I would love to see your results. <sighs> Stay crafty and see you the next time. Bye bye.